my water right here. We have something special for you. Um, you see, there's a couple chairs up here. That means I'm going to have a guest join me in just a few moments. And we're going to share together something that's very near to our hearts. And that is a subject that needs to be spoken on uh, more than just once every few months or years. Uh, it's a subject of marriage and relationships. How many think this world needs some help in the area of marriage and relationships, right? Uh, whether you are someone that has been, anybody here been married for 50 years or more? Raise your hand high. I want you to look around. Okay, 50 years or more. I think you could get some advice from these folks, right? How many 25 years or more? Now, keep the ones that were 50, keep them up. 25 years or more. Awesome. Okay, well, we'll start with, we'll just stop at the silver, okay? 25 and 50 and on up. Okay, give them a good hand. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, marriage takes work. Can I get an amen to that? And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to share some things about marriage and relationships that I believe will bless your heart and life. And uh, before I do that, and we're going to have a, a slide also where you can take notes, because tonight, maybe the young adults want to talk a little bit about this. Might be a good thing, and us older ones as well. But I want to take you to a quick couple quick passages to get us going, okay? And we first read about husband and wife in Genesis, right? Genesis chapter 2. Now, let me mention this to you. Genesis 2, 18, it said this. The Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. How many men say amen to that? A few of you? Okay. All right. That's a good. I'll put my hand up. He says, so here's what he said. I will make a helper suitable for him. Can I tell you something? I got, I got really inquisitive about the word helper. Do you know that I looked about 20 different translations from the original Hebrew, and almost every one of them used the word helper? There was just a few little minor changes in a couple translations. So I was like, what in the world does it mean that he's creating me a helper? Guys, have you ever thought that? She's my helper. Well, hold on just a minute. The word used for helper is used 66 times when in reference to God. To God as a helper. How many thankful that God's your helper? Amen. What would I do without him? Right? So it speaks of strength. In other words, Adam, I'm going to give you someone with strength. How many wives like to hear that? Strength. Power. Huh? protection, help, and I really like this one. I'm going to give you another helper, and another word for helper is rescuer. How many guys are thankful you got a rescuer you're in your marriage, huh? Does she rescue you guys? Austin, does Melissa rescue you? Aren't you thankful? That's a great helper. <laughs> Julie's helped me a lot. So when I thought about that, I thought, wow, Lord, my idea of what a wife should be to myself, and I'm talking from a man right now for a moment, okay? is she's my helper, my helpmate. Don't, we don't look at, husbands, we don't look at our wives as unskilled helpers, like we got to train them up and teach them everything we know. How many guys think you got to do that? Yeah, sometimes we do. I, uh, Dave, you're right there. Oh, Dave, okay. Yeah, and there's a little nudge. They got a good marriage over 25 years, and a nudge works, right? Amen. I get a nudge once in a while, Right? They're not less in status. They're not, oh, well, they're less educated. You know, I've got it. They're my helper. They're not subservient to the role of the man. You see, I think in the world we live in today, we've got this all kind of messed up. God's initial plan for, for marriage, for husband and wife, man and wife. I like what the Amplified Translation puts it. And that translation is a little bit of a paraphrase, but he gets to the point, and I wanted to read it to you. God said, I will make him a helper. And then quotations. One who balances him. A counterpart to who he is. Suitable and, and complementary for him. In other words, I'm going to create for this man 
someone that's going to be a reflection of him. Going to take what? A rib from his side. And so as we think of marriage and relationships this morning, those who have yet to get married and thinking about it down the road, that spouse, my wife, is my counterpart. She is a reflection of who I am. Matter of fact, the Bible says the wife is the glory of the man, all right? And so when I look at the wife as a, the helper, we're complementary to each other. And yet the world has got it all twisted, doesn't it? Think about it that way. Um, I was reading of a, of a man who does a commentary, and I've got lots of these in my study, but uh, Ellicott, he said it this way. The happiness of marriage is based not upon the woman being just the same as the man, hmm? but upon her being one in whom he sees his image and counterpart. Right? And so I, I like that. I, I really do. Uh, it's not about when we get married, we got to make them a duplicate of us. Like, men, she's going to be a duplicate of me. i got to find a wife who's going to be my duplicate. Uh, no, you, that's not what he's saying. It's going to be a, a, a counter, not a counterfeit, a counterpart, rather. Jimmy Evans put it this way. God designed husbands and wives to complete each other, not to compete with each other. Think about that. Chew on that for a minute. And then finally, uh, this is the other part I just wanted to do as an introduction. In Genesis 3.16, uh-oh, they sinned in the garden. Eve took of the fruit first, gave it to Adam. Then he took of it, right? The resulting consequence we read about in 3.16, Adam and Eve eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The result for Eve, and it's written right there, is that her accountability and authority or respect would be for her husband. She ate of the tree first. She gave it to her husband. And what God is saying here is God has established something as he has in the church. And Paul reads, writes it in Ephesians, and we're going to read that as our text in a moment. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church, and the wife is to love and respect her husband. And it's a picture of, of the church and Christ, we're the bride, he's the bridegroom, right? Husband, wife, the bride to the bridegroom. And so we find here that God, and when he gives this, some people say, well, the curse is a hard word to say. I mean, it, but he's, he's giving instruction as how things should be. How I many you know we should respect Jesus? He's our bridegroom. We love and we honor him. We submit to him. The big word submit gets us into trouble sometimes and how we interpret that. And here's how I want to go with this. And, and, and Ephesians, and it's up. You can put it up. I think it's not. Did I write it up there, Rob? You can put it up there. All right. By the way, the title of our message is the, the journey of marriage. But Ephesians 5.21, and I'm not going to read all the verses, but follow along with some of them with me. Paul says this. Submit to the one another out of reverence for Christ. In your Bibles, some of you have a little bit of a break. They do it by subject matter. And they have verse 21 before the subject of husband and wife. Can I tell you something? I don't like that break. Because I believe verse 21 helps us with verse 22 and following. Here's what it says. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Can I tell you something? I'm going anyway. Not ask permission. Just kind of a phrase. That word submit there in the original Hebrew is not there. It's been put there in your translations. In most translations, it's being put there because it's in reference to the preceding verse. And the preceding verse says, submit to one another, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, wives to your husbands as to the Lord. Does that help a little bit with perspective? For the husband is the head to the wife as Christ is the head to the church, his body of which he is a savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church, gave himself up for her to make her holy. And then I jump down to verse 33. However, each of you 
also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Church, the reason we come to you this morning again on this subject is a church is only as strong as its marriages. Its marriages, its relationships. And if our families and our marriages are struggling and are hurting, it's a sign that we need the Heavenly Father to come alongside and help us. If we want to help others outside of these walls and into this world who do not know God, who do not have Christ in their life, who do not have the Holy Spirit's help, if we can't get our act together, how can we expect them to do it and hear what we have to say? My prayer and desire is that as we move forward in the days and weeks to come, and I'm thankful for our young adults in this church. That's a sign of health, is our young adults and walking into marriage and, early, and new married lives and going to be getting married. Right, Danny? Danny, how many days? Oh, she, he's looking at the name. 75, 76, something like that, okay? That they will succeed, amen? How many want marriages to succeed, amen? All right. So... There's going to be ups and downs in marriage. And I'll tell you something. For Julie and I, we're far from perfect in it. It's been 29 years. And uh, we've had our good times. And we've had our struggles. You know, she's my compliment and my compliment to her. And when you're complimenting each other to each other, how many of you know you discover each other's issues and weaknesses? And little things that kind of get under your skin. And you get married, and after a few months of married life, you're like, I didn't know this about him. Or I didn't know that about her. And, and you have to work through it, right? How many think you, a marriage can be very emotional, <laughs> to say the least? And it's very emotional for me. And uh, this past week, better get my notes up. I'll let you have the golden chair, Julie. You don't want that one? <laughs> she don't want the golden chair. She wants the... Okay. All right. So how do I handle this, folks? <laughs> how do I handle this? Yeah, okay. All right. You'll fill them both out. Okay. So this past week, it was a Tuesday, I think it was. And have you ever just, guys, you just had a, a long day and there was a lot on your mind and, and actually... Little be announced to my wife, I'd actually was praying for her during the late afternoon. I was out on some visitation, and I, I was pulling into the yard. And uh, before I came in, I just sat there for a moment, and I, I just had a word of prayer between me and the Lord about some things I was focused on. And I walked into the door. And as I walked into my entryway, if anybody has been into my house, there's these steps that go up to the main floor. And I walk in, and I'm ready to walk up to the top of the steps, and there's Julie. She's standing there at the top. Remember this? Probably don't even remember. And I'm bringing it back to her, your remembrance because she don't know how important this was to me. And she's standing there at the top. She's got this big smile on her face. And I walk up to the top of the steps. With her smile on her face, she gave me a big hug, and she said these words, I like you a whole lot. <laughs> Julie, come on up. Come on up. Give her a hand. Guess what? I like her a whole lot. I like her a whole lot. Come on up and have a seat. Okay. You, want, you can sit over here if you want. You guess? Okay, we'll see how it goes. Whoa, I'm going to lose my notes. Okay, so we're up here. We did this several years ago. Uh, it's been way too long. And we've had people say, hey, we need to uh, do this again. Am I okay, Elijah? Okay, super. <laughs> we're looking at our son. Okay, we got the hand clap. We're okay. Okay. Uh, so we have a few notes in front of us, and we're going to have conversation a little bit, and it's being taped, of course. And uh, we just uh, want to share some things with you. Um, you know, when, we do, when I do messages, I always like to have an outline. So if you're taking notes, you could take, you know, an outline. I got four things I want to share with you, Julie and I want to share with you, rather, about areas in our life that we're still working on. Because you're still working on things. Now, we're not just talking to married couples here today. 
because I think many of the things that we're going to share with you are issues that we all need to look at in our life, even with relationships to one another, okay? And so come into this with us for the next few minutes and say, hey, what is it that I can learn from this? What is it that Dave and Julie have to say to you that uh, can help you as we also are learning together in our journey in marriage? And that's why we've called it a journey. Um, the first thing that comes to our mind is commitment. And we talk about commitment in marriage because that's really where it all starts, right? Um, I do uh, pre-marriage counseling. So um, I do that before I even have a couple uh, get married. Um, I want to know what is their commitment all about. Just like your commitment to Jesus Christ, we want to know what that is. What does that look like? What does commitment look like in a marriage? Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother, shall hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Mark 16, 9. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Or Mark 10, 9. Was that Mark 10, 9? I said sure. it wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I got that wrong. Uh, here's it should a, be a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Qu it here's should a, be a thing. It I should have a, a microphone when you preach. Yeah. Julie really should. Uh, <laughs> Part of our marriage, this is unique. This is unique. I get home and she can give me the lowdown and how it went. Uh, sometimes uh, yeah, it's good. Sometimes, oh boy, I blew it. Um, I've had you a few don't moments. Blow it. Yeah, there's been some things no. I've shared that uh, got me into trouble. <laughs> uh, commitment. I just want to read this and then we're going to do some conversation. Uh, commitment is important at, to a relationship because it provides structure. And stability. A commitment shows that you're willing to sacrifice your interests for the good of another person. It's the foundation on which love grows. It also trusts in a developing in a relationship. And uh, I just want to say this in case you don't know this. There is no perfect husband and wife. Have we established that? <laughs> We've established that. Concerning the commitment in a marriage, I think first and foremost about the vow and what that looks like to you and to I, to myself. And Julie, we gave our vow to each other uh, 29 years ago this May. And, uh, you know, there's been times I've really had to remember that vow because here's the thing, we're flesh, right? And there are times... The enemy would like us to just turn and run. Anybody be honest with me? There's been times you just felt like turning and running. Julie, what do you think about this? I'm going to start you out with this and maybe some of your thoughts. When you think about this commitment that we made to each other, what comes to your mind? What, what speaks to your heart? about? Well, that? I think when you said at the beginning about um, submitting to Christ, when you make a marriage vow... You're making that vow before God, and you're not only submitting and committing to another person, a spouse, you're committing to Christ. You're committing to God that I'm going to love, honor, and cherish this person for the rest of my life. We have to grasp that we didn't just promise that to each other. We promised that to Christ. That, in the hard times, makes me think, I'm not going to break my vow to Christ, um, I'm going to, we're going to get through this. We're going to walk through this because it was never, it's never, ever promised to be perfect, ever. Um, you know, with, that's why when you marry somebody, you marry for more than looks. You sorry. know, yeah. sorry. <laughs> but you do, I mean, you know, there has to be that spark, of course, but... You marry for more than looks because things like that fade. Even your personality fades, you know, after a while. Sometimes it's your just personality is not what you thought it was when you got <laughs> married. <laughs> um, but to me, the commitment is much easier when I look at it in the fact of Christ. I committed to Christ, and therefore I committed to him. So in the hard times, I remember. I remember we've had times up and down, you know, raising kids all of us have and I remember one time thinking to myself this was several years ago our kids were little tiny in Saginaw and I remember sitting on the couch just thinking I am just 
not getting any attention. And I remember thinking to myself, woe is me, you know, this is not really what I wanted to do and signed up for. <laughs> and um, there was a show on the TV, which we didn't watch a lot of Christian TV, but um, they looked, <laughs> and I don't, again, I don't always put a lot of stock in what I see on TV, but it just so happened that they were singing the song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. And I'm thinking, okay, that was for me because I was just being a baby and thinking that I didn't want to be tomorrow because this wasn't fun anymore. And so those moments that have come along the journey of, you know, the bottom line is when you are two Christian people, both trying to serve the Lord and submitting to Christ, it makes it so much easier when we submit to Christ first. Um, because when we all both want our way, that's when we struggle. But knowing that Christ gave me this man, gave us to each other, it helps in the when you're looking at the future. Like, this is just a, there's no other question. There's no out because I made that commitment to Christ, in my mind. That's how I feel. Absolutely. I think one of the words that Julie was using was gift. And uh, in that commitment um, for myself, uh, many of you know my history and my story, being here all these years ago and just a young person looking for a wife. Um, many were praying for me, and I found Julie. Um, I was praying for a long time that God would direct me to the right one. And so when I went into marriage and I saw Julie coming down the aisle, I saw that not only is God's answer to my prayer, but my, but my God's gift to me, that I was receiving a gift. And I think that in marriage, if we can continue to look to each other as God's gift to you, and God always gives us the perfect gift, even though we're not perfect in our own eyes and the things that we go through, she's my, still God's perfect gift to me. And that doesn't mean we've had it rosy all the time. And, and, you know, when we have the vows that we make in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, I mean, have you ever walked that, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, I just don't understand. She's, she's God's gift to me, and I got her love and respect her for, for who, who God made her to be and what she's going through, whether it's in sickness. And you guys all know that 10 years ago she was walking through a time in her life, in our marriage, and, boy, did we, we tested in that. And as I prayed for her and prayed with her, I realize this is my vow. This is my commitment to her that I made all those years ago, not knowing what would happen 19 years down the road. Julie, so you're my gift that God gives me. Thanks. Oh. Thanks. Um, <laughs> you're my gift, too. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. And she likes right. me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we need to preface that by saying that what, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because Tuesday was a while ago. Um, I think to preface what he was saying about how I said that when he came in the door, didn't you send me a text on your way home? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just something to take note of in marriage. We were, this is down in our yeah, points. Yeah, but let's say it now. But, you know, communication is key, and we text quite a bit throughout the day. Um, we both are flexible that way where we can. Um I'm pretty sure that you had texted, I can't wait to come home, I can't wait to be mm -hmm. home, something like mm -hmm. that. And so I think that, that that preceded, I was just happy that he was home at that point, you know. Um, <laughs> so that helped. You yeah. know, I didn't just randomly, hey. Sp I mean, I could have, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, something else I wanted to say, is, yeah. and I forgot some things today that I wanted to bring I did remember to bring Peyton, but I forgot to bring. <laughs> <laughs> there was some things I wanted to bring today, um, one of which was my journal yeah. from when I went through breast cancer because I was reading it the other day. And um, which leads me to the second thing I forgot, which was the marriage journals that we helped be a part of. Right. So um, when I was going through breast cancer, I was journaling. And um, a lot of times, you know, the reason we journal is so we can look back at it. I journaled um, just about everything, but one of the days I journaled about was how my husband carried so much. And I'm not going to cry when I say this, but I, 
in my journal, I wrote how no matter what was going on, he was still standing. Uh, and I wasn't sure how he was doing it because everything was happening all at once and with his mom passing away and all that. And then going through and he was taking care of the kids, taking them everywhere they had to go and all this. And in the journal, I was writing about how I want to always be reminded of the sacrifice that we need to make for one another. And so when I was going back to read that, I'm like, that really, that brought tears to my eyes again. And I thought that's what that was meant to do. Um, which also leads me to the fact that we have a friend who had come to us a while ago and said, I have a really heart for marriage. I want to see marriages succeed. And um, she said, God's put it on my heart to make a marriage journal. And with the marriage journal, uh, she made coffee mugs and ink pens. Um, the husbands say, husbands love your wives. And the wives say, uh, wives submit to your husband as unto Christ, something like that. And so um, we're like, well, you know, first of all, let me just say this. And what I was telling him this week, the, of course, the time that we decide to speak on marriage, and even with this marriage journal thing that we're, we've shared a little part of, um, I don't feel adequate to do that at all. I feel like... We have a great marriage, but we're not perfect. And I know I get under his skin yeah. way more than I, he gets under mine. <laughs> so, you know, that's just our personalities. But um, so I just am feeling like, Lord, I don't feel adequate to do this. But in this journal, we wrote the foreword. He wrote the foreword. Uh, it was, it's designed Amen. so that the men have a journal and the women have a journal. And it's designed to give to couples who may be struggling in marriage to journal and to write and to pray together and to read the Bible together. And so I wrote the foreword for the woman's journal. He wrote the foreword for the man's journal. And um, there's the cups and there's even T-shirts with our picture on them, which uh. <laughs> it's, they're, it's they're great, they're but wonderful. I have a hard time wanting to wear a picture of myself on a shirt. But I understand the concept. And they are beautiful. They really they are, are beautiful. beautiful. We'll show you when I remember to bring beautiful. them. I, it really touches my it, heart. It does because... It touches my heart because we're not perfect, but if our marriage as a Christian marriage can speak to somebody and encourage them, that's what we want to do. That's the bottom line. Um, you know, do it the way God intended, and God is going to bless it. And I think more than anything, even through the hard times, the ups and the downs, and I'm probably getting way off, but there is a piece of trust. There's a sense of trust here, and there's also... Um, the commitment in, is the commitment creates the trust. So we just know that no matter what comes our way, we're going through it. There's no, you know, that's how it is. Um, but feeling adequate to share on marriage, the only reason I feel that way is because I truly believe that we've tried to honor God in our marriage and in all these areas, commitment and other things. So yes. that's the only reason I really feel like we can say anything. That we even have <laughs> the ability right. to share, yeah. We look at some of you that raised your hands um, that have been married a lot longer than us. Mm -hmm. Some of you that have been married 50 years. Um, we, we realize that in our commitment to each other, it's important to always have those who have gone the journey farther than us. Right. To be able to talk to you and to be able to learn from you. You know, the Bible tells us to do that, to learn from the older. And to learn from the younger as well. We can, mm -hmm. we can do that. Um, the thing about this whole thing of, of commitment is there is an element of trust that comes into that. There is an element of uh, nurturing the intimacy that we need to have. And I know, you know, the second point of this is communication, so it's going to kind of just flow into that. But in nurturing that commitment, um, it's really important. There'll be times where I'll just, even when our kids were little, it was like Julie and I need our own time together, right? We yeah. just need our own time together. And so whether it was a family member or someone watched our kids, we made sure that we went out and spent time together. Uh, how many think that's a good idea? It's a very good idea. Because mm -hmm. that commitment is going to get strained. Mm -hmm. Just trust you, it's going to get strained and there's going to have things that happen. And we just kind of, we go away. Yeah, sometimes I'm not here on a Sunday. You know that happens, right? 
Guess who I'm usually with? 100% of the time, 99%. It's her. Usually? Usually. It's Always. Her. Always, really, yeah. You ain't yeah. with no one else. <laughs> She's with me. <laughs> sometimes I just have to get away. Uh, and you know, and I don't fault you either. We need to make sure we're spending that time, that mm -hmm. quality time where we're not distracted so that that commitment can be revisited and, and uh, improved upon because that, that needs to happen. Right, Julie? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I will tell you this, in this commitment, as I shared earlier at the very beginning, we're not cookie cutters of each other. I, I tell young adults that are looking to get married and uh, uh, they meet in the office and we have conversation with each other and like, oh, we're just so much like each other. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little moment. There was a little moment there. You know, and, and that's good. You want to find somebody that has your same interests and certainly mm -hmm. someone that loves the Lord. Amen. Right. And, and wants to serve the Lord the way that you do. But uh, we find out that there's those things that, again, complement each other. Um, and we share the same values and the same convictions. Can mm -hmm. I just say that before we move on to another point? Sure. Really is, sure. is that one of the things someone told me, they said, Pastor Dave, you are so picky. Picky about finding a wife. And I said, you know what? Whoever I find is going to share my same values and my same convictions. I mean, that was... That was the utmost importance to me. Uh, first of all, I wanted someone that loved Jesus so that we're equally yoked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there, were, there were others, Julie knows that, and she had others that had her eye, and I had others that had my eye. But you know what? First and foremost, do they love Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength? That was number one. Number two, did they share the same values, same convictions that I hold to? Because if they don't, we're going to have a lot of struggles on our hands. And I also knew this, that when I raised my family, because I believed I was going to have kids someday, that she and I together would be able to raise our children with the same values and the same convictions that we held dear to our lives. And I hope that that's helpful to you, and I hope that's helpful to the young adults who are looking to get married someday, is looks is one thing, like Julie said, but a love relationship with Jesus Christ has to be first. And sharing the same values and convictions uh, is something that goes right along with that. And, and that goes into the communication, because when we were dating, we communicated all those things. We shared those deep things about our life and our walk with the Lord. And uh, th when we think about communication, now let me just switch gears on this particular point, if I will, for a moment. James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Everyone should be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. And if our brother Fred was with us today, he'd say a big amen to that, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I talked about our speech, our words, not too long ago in a message. Um, it's so easy in emotions of things uh, to get our signals crossed. Am I right? Sometimes our signals are crossed. Sometimes the things that Julie and I are looking at, we know what the end result is, but we're not getting there the same way. And so emotions can be quite high. You've got to be a good listener. Here's something I'm learning. Okay? A good listener and don't interrupt. Do I have any people here that struggle with interrupting? You know what's, you know what's yeah. hard is you get in a conversation and your mind is going so fast, you just want to interrupt your spouse. Guys, particularly, does that work out well for you? Right? <laughs> You're shaking your head. No, no. You know, I'm learning, and I'm still learning after 29 years, let her say her thing. <laughs> I know what's on my mind, but let her say her heart. Let her express what she's thinking. And she's smiling because she knows I'm still working on I that. I do the same thing. I uh, you know, and, uh, and you can't jump to conclusions. And because, again, sometimes her thought process throughout some situation is a little bit different than my thought process. But we complement each other in the end. And we realize what the end result should be, the decision that should be made. There's only one thing that really frustrates me. I shared this with the men yesterday, okay? Is we go to Saginaw. All right, guys, you were there, right? You go to Saginaw because there's lots of restaurants there, right, for a date. And how many guys want your wife to, to pick the restaurant out, right? Because right? you want them to be happy, right? You know, it's biblical, Paul says you get married, you want to please your wife. So I'm just being biblical. 
So, so I'm, I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm just pulling, pulling off the road. I'm pulling into the, and I told the guys, and she knows this to be true more than once now. We're confessing up here, okay? The Bible says confess to one another. So I pull into a parking lot, and we sit in a parking lot. And if you've been over there enough, you know there's a lot of parking lots. You turn off the freeway. And I just pull in a parking lot, and I'm like, I love you so much. We're not leaving this parking spot till I know where we're going. Now, we've had 30-some minutes to get there, but we just kind of avoid the subject. Sometimes we talk about it. Sometimes we don't. But we eventually find a place where we have a meal, and we usually enjoy it together. It's what we want. But that's probably one of the only things where this communication thing really gets me. It just really gets me. And you me. know why that gets me? Why does it get you? Because I say I want your opinion. And you don't want to give your opinion because you want me to make the choice. And I say, <laughs> but I really want your opinion because I really, maybe I don't care today or I don't. So what we kind of do is we kind of narrow it down to like three. <laughs> and then, don't we? We yeah, narrow it yeah, down. And yeah. then if there's one that you really don't want or that I really don't want, we put that one out. But I want to know what he really wants too. But he sometimes won't say it. And that frustrates me. Yeah, I know it does. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep doing it because he thinks he's being biblical. I'm being biblical. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things. Those are the things. Try it, Those guys. I don't know if it's going to work share, for you. Can I have your permission to share one very personal thing? Okay. We didn't talk about this. Uh, this is, I'm serious. This is, this is going to be a kind of a, so, a serious thing. When I went through breast cancer, can I share this story about the, yeah. okay. I ha was at the point where I needed to shave my head. And this is just being honest, okay? This is being open about our marriage. Um, but I, needed, I was at the point where I needed to shave my head. And I asked my children, do you want to be home when I do this? And all of them were like, no, we're good. We don't want to be there. And then I asked him to shave my head. He would not do it. He did not want to do it because it was breaking his heart. But I wanted him to do it. And that was a little bit of a situation for us in that time. Um, my friend Elaine helped me out, and I, that was wonderful. Judy and Elaine came over and did it while Dave stood there and cried. But that was a hiccup for us a little bit because I held on to that a little bit that even though he, in his heart, meant well, he said, I cannot do that. I, it's paining me to do it. But what I was trying to convey was that I needed him to be the one to do it. But, I mean, I was definitely in good hands, but I wanted that to just be between us at first. And so that was a hiccup for us because even though we both had wonderful intentions and he had wonderful intentions, that was a time where I struggled because I felt like I wasn't getting what I needed there. And it, it was all of a sudden about him because he was struggling. So we had to work through that a little bit. Yes. And um, we did. We worked through it. We shared. We understood how each other was feeling. But th I'm just saying that to say that sometimes there is real communication issues. And sometimes it's hard to understand the other person. And sometimes we are hurt because... The communication isn't quite there, or maybe the other person just can't give what we need at that moment. And I had to let God heal that part and say, and God showed me, I didn't leave you to high and dry, I gave you someone that would help you. And so I had to look at it and give him grace in the fact that it kind of was a little bit about him at that point too. And I was kind of thinking it was all about me because I felt like it was at that moment, but he was struggling too. So I had to look at it in those terms that even though that was a lack right there, a little bit of a hole, we got past it because we had to just show each other grace and say, okay, it is what it was. And we're just going to move on because I, I had to understand he was struggling too. So I say all that to say in our best efforts for communication, sometimes we do have those pitfalls, but we do have to work through them. Right. And not, and there's a real spot there where I had to fight bitterness. And I didn't want to let bitterness creep in because we had a long journey ahead of us. And 
I knew that that was the enemy, and I think that's a huge thing that we have to see in marriages is that we cannot let the enemy have the foothold. We are on the same team. No matter what, we are on the same team. We are not against one another. And so when those things come and you're like, this person is not fulfilling my needs or, you know, they're not hearing me, remember that, first of all, Christ is the one that fulfills those things. And if there is a lack, Christ can help you get through it and Christ can fill that void or that lack thereof sometimes. Because sometimes we do look to that other person to be that fulfillment, and that's not really all it's supposed to be in its entirety. So just remember, too, you're on the same team. When you're communicating, saying the same, saying things differently, try to remember that you're on the same team. Just like any kind of a, a sports team or whatever, some people play this way. Some people play that way, but they're on the same team working toward the same goal. And sometimes there's a player in the team that maybe gives a little more, and sometimes there's a player that maybe isn't on their game that day, but you're still part of the same team. And so when you can remember that, that this is still, and don't let the enemy change that. Don't let the enemy say that person's against you or you're against that person. Remember that you're on the same team. That was one of the things that Julie and I were talking about before we, we came here today and this week as we were preparing is the whole thing about that we are a team and uh, husband and wife together. No one's going alone with it. Um, sharing responsibilities um, in the home. And uh, that, again, goes with the commitment. You know, uh, when I, marry, when I uh, have pre-marriage counseling and I talk to a, um, a, a man and a woman who are going to get married, I I bring up a lot of times the subject of, you're going to have children. How does that look like for you guys? Have you talked about it? Uh, Who's going to be responsible for what in that that marriage and in that family unit? And to be able to just come clean with what you expect. A lot of things about marriage is is about expectations about each other. And so Julie and I, and we're going through new seasons. We're grandparents now. Woo! And uh, the the expectations of each (laughs) other uh, as far as, this new season of our of our life together. We all know we go through new seasons, and uh, but to be able to communicate in such a way as you know things are changing, um, issues are changing. Physically, we're getting older. How I many you know when you get older, things start don't working like they used to. And uh, uh, Julie will say, "Hey, dear, can you go get this for me?" And I'll just kind of, sh- "Yeah, I'll go get it." You know, um, most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes, like she go and get it herself. <laughs> um, but uh, no. no, most of the time I get up, I get it, and I do what I have to do. I love her. We're a team. And uh, so those expectations, you need to talk them through, and not just in the early days of marriage, but throughout your marriage. A lot of times when I'll have to maybe counsel someone in a marriage uh, crisis, it's somehow they've lost touch with their expectations of each other, and they've lost that communication of what what they really thought things should be or how things should go. Um, One of the things in the whole thing about communication, are you ready for this one? Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Big words, but I'll tell you what. uh, We realized, and we mentioned earlier, that neither one of us are perfect, and so sometimes uh, (laughs) the day has not gone the way that we thought it would go, and something happened, and we acted in our emotions, and uh, we have to say we're sorry. Um, those words go a long way. Uh, the Bible even tells us don't go to bed while you're still angry with each other. Uh, I've told you before there was a time or two when she was leaving for work and we had conversation and it's not the way I wanted it to end. So it didn't end. I chased her out the door. She didn't turn the key in the car until we made things right. Till I knew that we were okay, that we could ask for forgiveness, that I could say I'm sorry, and, and we could move on and revisit it later. But that's how I've always been. It's like, I just, I just know that I want to make that right. How many of you need to live your life in a relationship where you want to make things right? Mm-hmm. No sitting and festering or bringing up the past or stewing on stuff that happened years ago and all of a sudden it's revisited. You know what? The devil doesn't want marriages to work, right? right? And I know that many of you here have walked through different times and things in your different mar- in marriages, and some of you can give testimony of some of the struggles that you've had. But we don't look to the past. We look to the future. 
We look to the here and now and where God can take us in our relationships with, in married couples and in relationships in general. Anything that the devil would like to do in a church is us to not get along with each other. I think we should all find each other on the way out and say we like each other a lot. Uh, I, you know, we, we talk about love all the time, but I think that, that I like you. You know, I love you. You're, you're my brother. You're my sister mm -hmm. in the Lord. And, and to be able to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Has he forgiven you a whole lot? Yes, he has. So I just want to forgive her, and she forgives me. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we talked about was um, in that being able to speak what's on our mind. In communication, you need to allow your husband or your wife to be able to freely express what's on their heart, their mind, without any fear of retribution. When someone tells me, uh, I just can't tell them that because they're going to get really mad or I'm going to be sleeping on the couch, I can honestly say we have never, neither one of us have ever slept on the couch. That doesn't happen. There's just no way. We might go to bed and not speak to each other, but we are not sleeping on the couch. Because <laughs> I'm not and he's not, so it ain't going to happen. Um, there has never been a time where either of us had that kind of power in our marriage to say, sorry, you're on the couch tonight. That is ridiculous. Don't ever say that to your spouse. I'm sorry. But come on. Be Christian people, grown adults, and think, this is our house. This is our bed. This is our whatever. Go to bed. Even if you don't have, you know, some, like I said, sometimes we kind of went to bed and I flipped that way and he flipped that way and that was good night. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we try not to. But my point being is it shouldn't, you shouldn't feel in your marriage like if I do this, I'm going to suffer repercussions. That is not what Christ designed. So if you feel like you cannot say in your marriage this or that, then somewhere we need to pray about communication and let Jesus use our heart and our life to be giving and graceful to one another. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that sometimes it don't make you mad or sometimes it doesn't frustrate you, but know and have that underlying trust that even if I say this, there, it's still going to be okay in the end. Just like when I had to say to him, you really, really, really hurt my feelings when you wouldn't do this for me, wouldn't shave my head. I mean, I, I was up at night asking the Lord, how do I say this? Um, but I knew I could say it. It just needed to be something that was said and worked through. So I think that's very important there, too, Absolutely. for communication. Absolutely. Um, you know what? We have notes up here. We're not going to get through them all. And I knew that. I told her. I said, we have so much to share. So that's going to have to be another time mm -hmm. uh, down the road. But may, may we just also move on to this third one. And I told you I had four, and I see the time. Um, and this will flow into the fourth one. But one of the areas that Julie and I determined from the very beginning in, in our communication with each other in our marriage and our relationship was in the area of stewardship. Stewardship plays a big key in, in, in a marriage. And probably in, in, in what I have noticed over the years, and some of you that have been married longer than us, is that one of the biggest stressors in marriage has to do with finance. Am I right? Or You're not in your head. You know. Or the lack thereof. Or the lack thereof. But it's the subject of what do we do? How do we make right. ends meet? How do we pay the bills? Uh, what do we do? What do we spend? What do we save? What do we give? All those things revolve around that whole, that whole concept. And, um, of course, when Julie and I got married, the first thing we knew, because I was, I was, like I said, I wanted to find someone that loved the Lord and had my same values and convictions. And I said, well, listen, we get married. Um, the first fruits of our income go to the Lord. That was just a... She knew it. She knew that's what I felt. That's where we stood. And so from day one, uh, we knew this. We were going to live within our means. That's just how it was going to be. There were a lot of things 29 years ago we wanted to have right out of the gate. We wanted to have everything that mom and dad had. But they worked 29 years to get that. Here we are just starting out. And so we realized that we had to, to walk through life in, in, in that season where God was going to stay first and then everything else would find its place as we walk through life. And part of the marriage vow that we made to each other was what? 
remember? Or rich or for poor. That we're not promised all the wealth of this world. We're not promised to have all the things that we want. But God's going to take care of our needs. And I'm telling you what, there's been times. And when you go through a crisis, and I mean this with all my heart. When you go through a crisis and in your marriage and your family, the last thing you care about when you talk about the love of your life is your material possessions. That's the last thing you care about. When, when I watched my wife go through what, some things that she went through, you know what the last thing I cared about was what was sitting in my garage. I could care less. All I wanted was God to do what he needed to do in her life because I love her and I'd do anything for her. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's carried the rest of my life up to this point. It's like, Lord, you can take all the things. Of the, isn't that the love you're supposed to have for God anyway? Can you pray in your heart? And this goes to all of us. Lord, you can take it all. I just need Jesus. I just need Jesus. I don't need all this stuff. It's nice to have. We accumulate it. Some of the stuff we end up having garage sales for it anyway. Put it online to sell. And it wears out. It rusts. But I got a relationship with my life that I made forever till the till day I die. And so when I look at all of this other stuff that we can accumulate, I just want to be a good steward of what God has given me and to whom much is given, much is required. But we start out with little. When you've been given little, then you be faithful with that. Then he gives you more. But that's God's principle. But I'm going to tell you something, and Julie can add to this, but when we started out in marriage, it wasn't all rosy, and sometimes we were like some of you in the stories you've shared. It's like, I don't know where we're going to get the next little bit of money to be able to do this or to do that. But you know what? We went to bed at night so much in love with each other because we had each other. Uh, Julie, what's your thoughts on this? Even though we ain't got money. <laughs> I'm so in love with, with you. She's going to sing. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we try to be on the same page. And you know what? It's a, it's a process sometimes. I mean, yes, have the same convictions about your money. That's a huge thing when you first go into marriage. Or even if we've been married this many years, things change. And, you know, some of you have done, gone through the Dave Ramsey thing. But the one thing that you need to remember more than anything is that God is your sustainer. Principles that Dave Ramsey says or whoever else, they're good and they're godly and they're okay and you should live by them, but God is your sustainer. We have had to pray for a miracle over miracle over miracle sometimes with our finances because we were dumb and sometimes we didn't make the best choices, but that's okay because God honored our faithfulness when we were faith. We were faithful. Maybe we made a, a screw up here or there, but... Um, God provided for us in ways that we couldn't have even possibly provided for ourselves at times when we were first married. Um, you know, whether it was family, friends, just miracles of we don't know where this came from. But the principle was we honored God. And, you know, it wasn't always rosy. And sometimes, like I said, it's a process. We still have to adjust. We still talk. I remember saying to him, well, I don't understand where all the money went. We just got this much, and now we have none. Where, where is it? I said to Julie, I said, here, I've been doing the bills. You take the checkbook. You look. Yep. Then she understood. And that's when I understood. <laughs> oh, okay. That's how much that costs? Wow. Okay. But then after that, then when I went through breast cancer, I said, here, I can't even think straight. You have to do it all. So then he did it all. And now we just kind of do it together. It's kind of yeah. whatever. We know what we're doing. We communicate on that. But, again, just honor God in that, and God will provide. God will provide. And you can, you know, I don't know, we just, we, sometimes, like I said, we thought, okay, we'll do this, this, and this, but God had other plans sometimes, too. Yes, he and did. And I think it's, that's, but it, that is a huge stressor. Yes, it so is. So it is very, 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 very helpful if when you first start out, any of you that are just starting out, that you're on the same page, and you know what's going on, and if you've been married 25, 30 years, you still have to communicate about that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, for those that uh, um, are listening online, because we have people listening online, I didn't give you the scriptures, did I? Oh, go. And they're Luke 14, 28, 
and Matthew 6, 33. And I'll let you read those on your own. But I really, I'm going to read uh, Luke's 14. Now that I think about it, 14, 28. Which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and cost the, count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? And I think that's what Julie and I were talking about in marriage. And it's just sitting down and having that honest conversation. Uh, I'll tell you what, we're very honest about it when it comes to things like spending money. Um, we have conversation, and she'll be like, can I go to the store, and I, can I do that? Is, do we have, where are we at with it in that, in that regards? We don't surprise each other and say, oh, guess what? I just went and spent all this kind of money on this I and that. I bought a car. Yeah, yeah, and no. she's like, what did you just do? Because uh, that that's just something We don't that, ask small things. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, we have made a commitment a long time ago with a dollar amount that we will communicate. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't purchase anything over that amount without talking to the other person. And it's changed over the years, yeah. the amount. Um, you know, it's hard when I spend more money than he does, and we <laughs> know that's how it's a lot of times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm the penny pincher. He's a penny pincher. Yeah. He walks out of his shoes, which... Yeah, guys, you walk, you wear your shoes till the till the soles come apart. How many of you do that? <laughs> right, 100%. right. I'm going to get my walking out of them pair of shoes uh, until she looks at it and says, "Why are your socks all wet?" I'm like, "Well, I guess it's time." This is a true story. You want to hear this true story? All right, go ahead. We went to dinner with Pastor and Judy a couple of years ago for Pastor Appreciation. They want to take us out to dinner, so we went to dinner, right? And afterwards, they said we would like to maybe purchase something that you need. Okay, so we went to Kohl's, right? And we're sitting there, and they're, they're like, is there anything that you could use here? And Dave sheepishly says, I think I could use a new pair of shoes. And no lie, his sh feet were sticking out of that shoe. I didn't even know. <laughs> I have a picture of it. I should have brought it. But the sole was completely off, and his, you could see his sock. His shoe was right there. <laughs> And I'm going out with Pastor and Judy on. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know, or he would not have had those shoes on. I don't know <laughs> why he felt he needed to wear those shoes, but thankfully, they were so gracious. They just bought him shoes, and she said, Pastor Dave, this is like when you were single, and you didn't buy yourself nothing. <laughs> but Something's just a change. <laughs> so he's, he's learning that I'm he can learning. buy a new pair of shoes maybe. But, yeah. but you know what? That goes to the other point of selflessness in a marriage. Do you know how many times... I say, oh, I think I need this, or I'm thinking about getting that, or I might need this. And he's like, you should get it. He didn't even have to shoes, you know. <laughs> so I look at that, and I think, okay, that's a part of selflessness. Also, wearing your wedding ring until I had to cut it off your hand. That Now, that was just whoa, silly. Whoa, 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 whoa. That whoa. was just I silly. think it's time to be done, dear. No, <laughs> no I uh, had that wedding ring, you know, for all those years. He but guys, how many of you know you start changing over the years? You're not what you used to be when you were young and spry. And all of a sudden, it got stuck, and I couldn't get it off. And I thought, oh, I'll just leave it on, you know, because I got my wedding ring. Until the circulation was <laughs> causing some serious issues. And sh we couldn't get it off. Seriously, could not get it off. And so that's the story. That was a little bit of lack of communication there. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, listen, guys. <laughs> um, we got to start bringing this to a close. But there's this one last point that if I can just have a few minutes before we're done, okay? Um, the spiritual growth part of marriage is so very important. And as we've walked through life together, and there's the passage of Scripture. It's up there for you. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. And for the sake of... Those who are listening, plus those of you here that right now, let me just read it. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. When Julie and I went into marriage, and it should be the case for any of those who are considering to get married, and all those of you that are, and in our relationships with each other, no matter what they are. We have, I have good guy friends. She has good girlfriends that, that she confides in, she talks to. Guess what? God's always got to be at the center of it. Let God be at the center of your relationship, your marriage. Um, uh, it, it's just, I don't, we don't know what he would do without him. And to be able to pray together, to talk to the Lord together on behalf of our own lives and what we're going through 
We just, we just need that. You need that. Amen? We need that in our relationship. Um, there was just the other day she was having a rough day at work. She works with little kids, three- and four-year-olds. How many think day in and day out that will get under your skin? And one day they were just getting under her skin, and I got that text, and she simply said in her text, can you just pray for me? And you know what I did? I prayed for her right there and then. I said, Lord, please help her. You know, and, and, and to know that we can do that with each other, that's, that's a healthy thing, to be able to do that and to share the word of God together and study it together and read it together. To meet, and here's something else, and, and may I share this particularly with some of our younger adults that are getting married or have been married a short time. Listen, being with others, couples, and other people of the church and other times, like tonight's a great opportunity, by the way, with the life group, is so helpful in a marriage to get around other people, others of, of like faith, and to be able to have fellowship with each other and share stories and realizing you're not going through it alone. We've learned so much from you folks that you've gone through things that we thought we were the only ones going through it, and you've gone through it. So it's so helpful. And, and uh, so don't isolate yourself. Don't become an island, island to yourself. Work together through personal struggles. Like Julie was saying, we've had our personal struggles. Some things hit us that we didn't see coming. Can anybody identify with that? You just didn't see this coming. And so we don't judge based on the fact that we don't understand each other because there's going to be misunderstandings. And so we have to work through them. And, and that's so very, very important. And marriage relationships should always reflect the characteristics of love that are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Richard Dobbins uh, puts it this way. He said, Christian married love is a persistent effort on the part of two people to create for each other the circumstances in which each can become the person God intended him or her to be, a better person than he or she could be alone. And that's been my prayer for Julie is, Lord, I want, even though she's God's gift to me, I want, Father, in her life, everything that you have purposed and planned for her. And that keeps me from walking in selfishness. Like she's everything I need. I want God to fulfill in her life. Even though we are together one, she still has been created by God with her abilities and her talents, and that of her heart that God has specifically designed for her. I hope that puts it in perspective. And she wants me to succeed in everything that God has planned and designed for my life. And yet we get to walk life together. Can I say this? It's so cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it that I can walk the journey with her. Julie, is there something you want to say before we're done today? Um, I think the one thing that I was thinking was... Um no matter where you're at, whether you're just starting out, whether you've been married many, many, many years, the one thing that I do believe is that when we are submitted to Christ, that there's always hope. No matter what struggles a marriage goes through, no matter what ups and downs, when you're submitted to Christ, there's hope. And I know, you know, we, we've been doing this a lot of years, and I'm not naive to think that every marriage succeeds, but that's why we're sitting here, because we want marriages to succeed. We want us to follow Christ's example. And, you know, I un we understand. We understand that marriages are hurting. Things are happening. And maybe there is an unsafe situation that shouldn't be happening. And that's not what we're, we're not talking about that necessarily when we say stick in there. But what we are saying is let's all submit to Christ so that we can stick in there, so that we can you know, weather the ups and downs, you know. Um, and again, when you're, you're trying to remain on the same team, that's the most important thing there. Yeah. So here's what we want to do. We want to pray for you guys. We want Julie's going to pray, and then I'm going to pray. And I think, I think that's how we're going to end it today. Danny, we're going to do it a little bit differently. And so what we want you guys to do is now you've been sitting for a long time and we've talked a long time. Would you guys all stand with us? Let's just all stand together. And uh, this has been different, hasn't it? 
we've just been able to s sit up here and share on this, on this very important topic that we know that we all need to be refreshed on. And, and uh, we love you guys. We just believe, as I shared at the very beginning, and then we're going to pray, I just, I really believe, Julie and I really believe that God is doing something wonderful here at Caro Assembly of God, and God is growing his church, and we are so excited about what God is doing in relationships one with another. And I just, Julie and I, we don't want to see the devil get any foothold in any family, in any relationship. We want to see relationships grow and flourish and be everything that God wants them to be. You're here today and you say, well, I'm not married, Pastor Dave and Julie. I'm not married. I'm just kind of walking through life as it is right now. Listen, God's got a plan and purpose for every one of us and where we're at at any moment. And the relationships that you've been given, that you're walking through, um, some of these things we've shared about apply to all those kind of areas of life. Forgiveness, understanding, communicating, you know, and being a blessing that you can be in a relationship. Um, we want to encourage you in that in the days to come. Um, I'm so thankful for what's happening on Sunday nights. Isn't it great? Yeah. Sunday nights, all these young adults gathering together. What a sign of what God wants to do in the days to come. Julie's going to start by praying, and we're going to bow. Can you just bow your heads with us right now? Julie, I want you, and we've talked about this, I want you to pray for the young marrieds, the young adults in our church, and anything else that, as you're praying, that the Lord would just lay in your heart to pray about. I want you to pray for them right now. Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to come together and just to share, and thank you for the opportunity to share our heart. And Lord, while we stand here and we are not perfect, our marriage is not perfect, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will use anything that we have said, Lord, to encourage others, to encourage young marrieds, to encourage those who are not married. Father, I pray that as they look toward marriage, maybe they're single or maybe they're engaged or whatever the, the situation is, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that God they would look to honor you more than anything. That, Father, you would be the center of their marriage. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that they would dig deep into the word to look at what it looks like to have a godly marriage that works together, Father. I pray that relationships would grow that forgiveness would grow, that maturity would happen. That, Father, as we grow in you, that you allow these young people and these new married people to understand that it's a process. And, Father, I pray for tenacity. I pray for longevity, Father. I pray for marriages that are blessed, that are blessed financially, that are blessed physically, emotionally, that are blessed financially. Jesus, that they would see that you are the yes. sustainer of yes, life. Yes, Father, Jesus. help us, God, as we yes, walk Lord. through, Hallelujah. that we would honor you, that we would look to you. Father, that we would know that our fulfillment is first in Christ. And, Lord, I pray for success in the eyes of Jesus. Yeah. Not in this world, not what this world says, Lord, but that we, would, that we would measure our marriages. Lord, whether we be married two years or 25 or 50, that we would measure our marriages according to your word, O oh God. And help us, Jesus, that when we are in a place that we need to change something, that, God, we would be willing to and able to change it. Father, we don't have to live with it's just how it's going to be because it's been this way or because that's the way I was raised or any of that. Lord, we can live the way that you want us to live. Our marriages can reflect your love and your design. God, I pray for that as we go forward. I pray that we would be quick to listen and slow to speak. I pray that yes, we would yes, learn Lord. that even early on in our marriages, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the creation of marriage. Thank you, God, that you have saw fit to put people together to serve you better. And I pray for that, Father, as, as the marriages that are just starting out, I pray, God, that they would submit mostly to, ultimately to you first, Jesus, yes. and then to one another. In Jesus' yes. name I ask that. And, Father, I thank you again, and we all together thank you that, Lord, you've looked down today and you've, you see our hearts. You see where each of us are at in our own life with you. And I pray, Father, that, that what has been shared today is Julie and I have poured our heart out to those we love here. 
that God, you would take this and that, Lord, it would be a, a subject of conversation and of attention that would, that would happen in families and those who are thinking of getting married someday and, and those who have relationships with other couples. And, Lord, wherever we find ourselves at today, Father, Lord, we pray, and as Julie's been praying, Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be our helper and our guide. And that, Father God, that you would be pleased. Lord, may, may from this place, from this congregation, from these people, be a witness to our community of families and marriages, Lord, that are built upon Jesus. That, Lord, we would radiate in our homes and our marriages the love of Jesus Christ to others. So, Father, I thank you for that. And you're going to use us. I believe it. You're going to be using us in these days, Lord, to let that happen to our world. Use us, I pray, in our marriages and families. Father, I pray a blessing on us today. And I pray as we go that even as we go, this might be conversation we have over the lunch table or in a life group tonight. I pray, God, that you would take us and use us for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Do you love each other? All right. Before you go, love on people. Let them know you're glad to see you. And let's see you. And then we'll see you next week.